Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net and it's Saturday the 2nd of January. Thanks again for watching. Um, if you want us to send you an email when this forecast is updated, just send a blank email to the address here on the screen, generalweather-subscribe at weatherweb.net and we can add you onto the list and thereby ensuring you never miss an update of the videos. And we keep your email addresses here as well, so don't worry, you're not going to be bombarded with a load of rubbish from elsewhere. It is just to keep you informed as to when the videos are updated. Okay, um, the latest CANSIPS model is out, looking at February, March and April, which we'll do in just a second. First of all, um, changes detected in the models. You know this has been ongoing now for a week or so, where the models were kind of hinting at changes in the overall circulation in the northern hemisphere. Um, it's kind of picked up today by the GFS with the general shift southwards of the jet stream. This is the 500 millibar chart for this afternoon. The jet is flowing through here um, and notice the trough here out towards the west. That's the feature moving in for tomorrow through the country on Sunday. It leaves us with this setup on Monday and then a clearer view look of the jet being to the south of the country. So we're on the colder sides of the jet stream but still these low heights are to its north. High heights across the far north of Scandinavia here. Now towards the end of the week we get another trough that uh, gets itself in. There's the jet by Thursday. It's kind of doing that sort of movement. We've got this pump northwards, very warm air once again, but this whole feature moving quickly through eastwards so that this here becomes the dominant air mass, or rather the dominant block of air by the weekend. So that's next Saturday. There's the jet through here, not too far south of the country. But we are still on the colder side. And then the next system comes in. This next trough moves through. Now look what happens with that one. It's not going as far north here. You see there's a general shift south of the airflow itself. This colder air is into its back edge here. And then by the middle of the uh, week after next, so this is Wednesday the 13th of January, the jet is to the south here. Trying to get a ridge as well pumped up here. Uh, by then. Uh, much questioning over the detail by this time, but the important feature to note is that this jet has been pushed southwards, cooler air is coming in. This is no reason to kind of get yourself whipped into a winter frenzy because I don't think that's going to happen. I think what it is is just indicative of a cooler, unsettled westerly flow with the emphasis for the rain shifting further south through the UK rather than uh, so much across northern England and Scotland and a tendency towards there being more frequent wintry showers, particularly over the hills of Scotland, northern England, Ireland, northern parts of Wales, but not exclusively, it may well be that at times those wintry showers do get further south. Still no real signs of anything uh, <laughs> approaching what you would call nearer winter, but compared to what we have had, which has seemed like an extended autumn, then it will be cooler overall. And it's the signal that most of the models are giving. Now, I mentioned about the CANSIPS model, the Canadian, that's just been released. This is its forecast for February. And uh, notice it's trying to build heights up towards the north here. Keeps these low than normal heights down towards the south and puts a ridge here across Europe with a trough out towards the west. Now, the result of that is again to bring the jet further south. It brings a tendency towards cooler conditions across Scotland. Still no hits of winter, but certainly a cooler month. So it's going along with our overall theme of February being the coolest month uh, of the winter and the, this winter being really backloaded um, in terms of cooler weather. Temperature prediction for February looking like this. You see below normal temperatures highlighted across Scotland and Northern England, across East Anglia, South East England, really cold air getting into uh, eastern parts of Europe, Scandinavia, <coughs> excuse me, western parts of Russia. This because of this cold northerly field, milder, milder down towards the south because of the westerly flow coming in from the Atlantic here. So the UK on the fringes of the unsettled stuff down towards the south. I think what this could do is increase the risk of lower pressure passing across southern parts of the UK, which may well increase the risk of some sleet or snow events. Wouldn't last very long, but certainly the threat is there. But a cooler look overall for the UK, uh, tying in with our uh, February forecast. 
And rainfall wise for February looking like this, uh, drier than normal conditions according to Canadians across much of the north of the UK, uh, wetter than normal across western parts of Portugal uh, and into the northwestern parts of France. So really the high dominating out here and with that pattern the flow is something like that. So we get a cool flow through the UK. That very much interrupted because we've still got the jets to the south of the UK, so it's not a true anticyclonic flow. Um, we get those westerlies coming in as well, but it's a cooler cyclonic flow. Then for March, uh, still goes with the idea of uh, the higher than normal heights out towards the west, trough off towards the east here with lower than normal heights down there. Um, again, what it's trying to do here is to get the overall pattern looking something like so. So it tries to get in um, a cooler west and northwesterly winds through the UK with the warmer side of the ridge building its way northwards across the uh, Atlantic. And western parts of the UK it does go with near to above normal conditions, particularly across Ireland. Eastern areas tend to be on the colder side. You notice here, with that northwest flow, look, the cold air getting across much of uh, Eastern Europe once again. No surprises here with March signalled as being wet across much of central and Eastern Europe because of the jet that flows through here, the northwesterly coming in here, uh, and the high out here keeping the western parts of the UK generally uh, with below normal rainfall, near and normal elsewhere. But this signal look for wetter weather down towards the south as the low moves east. And I think that's perfectly accepted. Just a sneaky look into April. Um, it's again trying to uh, get its height built towards the north of the country, but this time more over Scandinavia. Um, we need to watch this one because if we get a trough kind of coming in here, that sort of flow establishing itself through the uh, through the UK, that builds the. Um, tendency towards high pressure off towards the east. It brings the potential for wetter weather through the UK. Jet still pushed further south at times through the month, but that then focuses the potential for colder weather across central parts of Europe and across much of the southern UK. And of course, combine that with a wetter weather potential here and across much of Central Europe. It could be a really chilly one. I think this um, late start to spring that we've been highlighting is, is starting to be picked up here by the mods. Canadian model actually isn't bad at doing this longer range stuff. The CFS tends to get itself stuck into a rut a little bit, and that's evident from the 200 uh, millibar flows here. This is February, and uh, gets lower than normal heights north, higher than normal south, really piles in the idea of the stronger westerly flow. Does a similar thing into March as well, low, low the normal heights north or over the country, high the normal to the south and tries to bring in this westerly. Although what it does do is it does build the ridge off towards the west of the UK and it does try to get cold weather into Central and Eastern Europe. So there is agreement there between the uh, CANSIPS and the CFS for March. And then for April, uh, again, it goes for the ridge idea across the uh, UK, tries to get stronger than normal jet down towards the south, again, tying in with that idea that we saw on the CANSIPS there, but it's still strongly westerly, but certainly puts in wetter conditions and cold conditions across much of Central Europe, Southern and the Eastern parts of the UK. So I think the overall theme that we've got to be looking at and it's an idea that we've been touting for a while. Um, the thoughts of a late start to spring and the potential for some cool and some pretty wet weather shifted south through the UK, away from the northern parts where it's been thus far this winter, coming southwards and tending to be across the southern UK and central parts of Europe. Of course, we'll keep you updated throughout on that. Um, I always stress these are long-range forecasts. You know, some we get right, some aren't so right, uh, some we get wrong. Um, but we always keep you up to date and try and give a justification as to why we're doing what we're doing. But you must treat these long-range forecasts cautiously. Okay, I'm going to leave you with that for now. But whatever you're doing, thanks again for watching. Keep the sun shining and bye for now.